Picture this. You wake up and stare at an engineering miracle. An island shaped like a giant palm tree rising from the Persian Gulf overnight. Sounds impossible? Dubai already did it. This isn't just real estate. It's open warfare against nature, a $12 billion roll of the dice that laughs at logic. But there's one question almost nobody dares to ask. How on earth did they pull it off? Enjoying our Dubai deep dives. Smash that like button and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Dubai, a city synonymous with luxury and innovation, has always pushed the boundaries of what's possible. Faced with limited coastline, they decided to expand their horizon, quite literally, by constructing artificial islands. The most famous example, the Palm Jumeirah. Think of it. Millions of cubic meters of sand, precisely sculpted into an iconic shape. It seems impossible, right? But it's very real. In this video, we're diving deep, pun intended, into the incredible story of how Dubai created these man-made marvels. We'll uncover the engineering secrets, the audacious strategies, and yes, even the environmental price tag behind these ambitious projects. It wasn't just about piling sand. It's a mind-blowing story, blending cutting-edge technology, fearless vision, and a whole lot of determination. From the initial concept to the first residents moving in, we'll dissect every step of this ambitious endeavor. So buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to discover how Dubai dared to dream. And then build its own piece of paradise right on the water. You will learn the methods, costs, and impacts of this unique, groundbreaking project. That's right. Dubai didn't just discover extra land, they made it. This brings us to our core question. What is land reclamation exactly? Well, simply put, it's like creating new land where there was once only water. Think of it as turning the sea into solid ground. How? Typically, it involves dredging, which means scooping up sand and sediment from the seabed and transporting it to the area where you want to extend the land. But it doesn't stop there. Ensuring this new land is stable enough to build on requires careful compaction and reinforcement. Why go through all this effort? Land reclamation offers a solution to limited space or the desire to reshape a coastline for development, tourism or other strategic purposes. It's not enough to just pile sand. It's more complex than it seems. Land reclamation is reshaping coastlines, expanding cities, and in Dubai's case, realizing a vision of unparalleled luxury and innovation. This practice of building new land mass opens up opportunities. So now that we know what land reclamation is, how did they actually do it? So how did Dubai get all that sand and rock? It's not like they just went to the beach with a bucket. Imagine needing enough sand to build multiple islands the size of small cities. That's a lot of material. First, massive dredging ships vacuumed up sand from the seabed of the Persian Gulf. Think of it like a giant underwater vacuum cleaner. But this wasn't just any sand. It needed to be the right type and quality. Next, they needed rocks. Tons of them. These weren't just lying around either. They blasted rock from the Haja Mountains, a mountain range shared between Oman and the UAE, and trucked it to the coast. This rock formed the breakwaters, protective barriers that shield the artificial islands from the relentless waves. It's a logistical puzzle of epic proportions, moving mountains of material to create these stunning islands. This monumental task then brings us to the next phase, shaping the land shaping the palm. It wasn't just dumping sand. Imagine trying to build a perfectly shaped palm tree in the ocean. How do you even start? First, they used GPS technology, like super precise digital blueprints. This ensured every frond was exactly where it should be. Next, vibro compaction. This tech stabilizes the sand, making it solid enough to build luxury resorts. It's like pressing down coffee grounds for a perfect espresso, but on a massive scale. Think about it. Without this, the island could literally sink. But here's the real kicker. Engineers created that crescent-shaped breakwater. It protects the palm from brutal waves. 
It's a three meter high, 160 kilometer long barrier. Imagine it as an artificial reef, a shield against the sea's fury, ensuring the palms a paradise, not a problem. That crescent, more than just a pretty shape, it's the palm's bodyguard, but how does one even begin to protect a massive island from the relentless sea? It's not as simple as building a wall, that's for sure. This is about battling erosion. It's about calming powerful waves. It is about engineering environmental harmony. First, that breakwater. It absorbs the wave's energy. Think of it as a giant sponge. It's not solid so the water impacts and then the energy dissipates into the structure itself. Next, consider the shape of the palm. Its design minimizes direct wave impact, the fronds direct water flow, reducing erosion risks. A vital and clever trick. Finally, constant monitoring. Engineers constantly assess the island's health. They're looking for subtle shifts and signs of erosion. If they see any areas of concern, they act immediately because unchecked, the sea always wins. But unchecked power always has a price. What price did Dubai pay? We have to talk about the environmental costs. The unvarnished truth? Building the palm changed the surrounding marine environment. Dredging. It stirred up sediment. It clouded the water. Sunlight? Blocked. Coral reefs struggled. Marine life disrupted. Imagine building a city on top of a coral reef. That's essentially what happened in some areas. But here's where it gets interesting. Dubai knew this was a problem, and they invested heavily in solutions. Not many know this. One key, careful placement and design. Channels were created to maintain water flow. It's like giving the ocean room to breathe. These channels help to prevent stagnant water and allow marine life to move freely. Think of it as opening a window in a stuffy room. Another, artificial reefs. Dubai deployed them to encourage coral growth and attract fish. Basically, they're building new homes for marine life. This is a game changer. It's not perfect, of course, but Dubai is actively trying to mitigate the impact. Now the question is, is everything enough? That is up for debate. But is it enough? Let's jump to the effects on Dubai itself. This island, it redefined what was possible. Before the palm, Dubai was already growing fast. But let's be real, the palm Jumeirah, that changed everything. Think about it. Suddenly, you have this insane coastline. More beaches, more hotels, more everything. It instantly became a global hotspot. Investors, tourists, celebrities, they all flocked to Dubai. This wasn't just about building an island. Dubai was signaling itself to the world. We're here. We're bold. We're building the future. Want another advantage? Land value? Prices exploded. That gave Dubai the capital to fuel even more projects. More innovation. It's like a snowball effect. And this is also cultural. The landscape of ambition now becomes visually associated with the city itself. So Dubai built these incredible islands. But at what cost? Is it sustainable? That's the billion dollar question. What happens now? This isn't just about Dubai, really. It's a lesson for all of us, a test case. Think about it, these weren't cheap to build. They require constant maintenance. Erosion is a relentless enemy. And the environmental impact? Underwater habitats, potentially devastated. Is the gain worth the risk? The real challenge, long-term viability. Can these islands thrive for decades? Or are they a beautiful but fleeting dream? Dubai is investing in renewable energy, experimenting with sustainable building practices. But is it enough to offset the impact of these massive projects? Here's the key, innovation. Dubai needs to pioneer new technologies, solutions that ensure these man-made wonders don't become environmental nightmares. It is all about investment. It's a race against time, a real-world experiment. Can luxury and sustainability coexist? Dubai is betting everything on it. We're watching closely. So, is the Palm Jumeirah a miracle? Absolutely. A testament to human ambition without a doubt but also a risky bet. Think about it. Dubai essentially sculpted land from the sea. Ingenious methods, crazy scale. 
It's pulled off right here, pushing the boundaries of engineering and design. But there's a cost. The environmental impact looms large. Changed coastlines, damaged marine life, a debt to nature that will eventually need settlement. Dubai is counting on sustainability, new tech, investment in renewables. The hope is to balance ambition with responsibility. Can they succeed? Can innovation and sustainability coexist? Or will these stunning creations become a cautionary tale? The world is very much watching, waiting for the answer. It's an experiment that will define Dubai's legacy. So, Dubai dreamed big, really big, and built islands where none existed before. We've seen the incredible engineering, the sheer scale of ambition, but also the environmental tightrope they're walking. Sustainability is not optional, it's essential. Imagine these islands thriving, powered by clean energy, a blueprint for coastal development done right. The future depends on it. But now, I want to hear from you. What do you think? Seriously, head down to the comment section right now and tell me, are these artificial islands a stroke of genius, a risky gamble, or both? I read and replied to as many comments as I can. Engage down there, argue, discuss, and share your perspective. It all starts with you. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Why? Because next week, we're diving deep into another mind-blowing Dubai project. One that could change how we think about living in the desert forever. Trust me, you absolutely do not want to miss that. Consider this a sneak peek of the unknown, but only if you subscribe now. Finally, remember, progress and preservation don't have to be enemies. If Dubai can lead the way, they can lead the planet. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the comments.